Hey everybody, uh, this uh, Algebra 2 slash Algebra 1 lesson is on solving uh, using the quadratic formula. So here we go. The quadratic formula is this. Uh, the solutions to ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. This works for any quadratic equation, you guys. Um, uh, x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Easy to memorize, right? How about this, you guys? A little, a little jingle here. X equals opposite B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Let's try that again. X equals opposite B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. One more time. X equals opposite B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. One more time. Or how about this? Some negative boy couldn't decide on whether to go to a couldn't decide is a plus or minus some negative boy couldn't decide on whether to go to a radical car party or to be square and miss out on four awesome chicks the party was over at 2 a.m. whatever way you need to memorize it you guys um, uh, just to get it memorized it, you'll use that over and over again for you the rest of your math life here and there okay so use the quadratic formula to solve the equation so here's this one right here Okay, it has to equal 0, so you've got to subtract 3 from both sides. And then notice A is 1, B is negative 2, C is negative 3. So here we go. X equals opposite B, so it's positive 2, plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Crank all of that out, you guys, and you should get um, uh, square root of 16 in there, which is 4. So it becomes 2 plus or minus 4 all over 2, which is 2 plus 4 over 2, 2 minus 4 over 2, and it comes out to be in... Uh, 3 or negative 1. Okay, quadratic formula works on all of them, but you have to make it equal to 0. So if this one isn't, then go ahead and make it equal to 0. Subtract x and subtract 6. And then go ahead and crank out the quadratic formula, and there you go. Okay, uh, just make sure that a lot of kids, they think they're going to be great on the quadratic formula, and they just mess up, you guys. Me too. I lose negatives all the time. Here's another one, you guys. Uh, go ahead and uh, use the quadratic formula. And this is what you get. So you get a, a negative inside of there. Well, now we know negatives give me i's, so it's 5 plus or minus i root 47 all over 4. Okay? Uh, so which methods to use for solving quadratics? This is what I recommend, you guys. I would factor it. If you can factor it, that's the best way to solve it, because then you can set the factors equal to 0. Check this out. Look at this mess from section B. We did this one using the quadratic formula. Well, this dude factors right here. Check it out, you guys. Factors of negative 3 that add to negative 2. Check it out. Uh, negative 3 times positive 1. Then you set those factors equal to 0. You get x equals 3 or x equals negative 1. Factoring is the ticket. It's the best way to do it if it can be factored. If it can't be factored, uh, let's see, finding square roots. So, like, say I had x squared equals 25, then it would be x is plus or minus 5. Or if I had, you know, quantity squared equals, you know, 36, then it would be that quantity is equal to plus or minus the square, uh, square root of 36, which is 6, okay? So, completing the square, if and only if, that's an even number and that's 1. If otherwise, if it's not, if that's not 1 and that's not an even number and I can't factor it, I would use the quadratic formula as a last resort, okay? So, here we go. So, solve using any method. Here's number one. Can I factor that? Are there any factors of 39 to add to negative 16? Yes, 13 and 3 do. So, x uh, minus 13 times x minus 3. Notice, notice uh, negative 13 plus negative 3 equals negative 16. Negative 13 times negative 3 is a positive 39. So, set this equal to 0, set this equal to 0, and there you go. There's your answers. Okay, how about this? Or can you factor that? No, there's no factors of 5 that add to negative 10. But this one's a good completing the square because that's even and that's 1. So by completing the square, we're going to add out this 5. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And then take half of 10, which is 5, and square that, which is 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. Okay, now I'm going to factor and solve. Square root both sides, and I get uh, square root of 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, which is 2 root 5. Add this 5 out on both sides, 5 plus or minus 2 root 5. All right, now I know I went fast, but this is an Algebra 1 lesson in and taught in an Algebra 2 class, so um, pause it if you need to, you guys. Okay, does this guy factor? Actually, this one does, you guys. Uh, uh, multiply 5 times, or 15 times 4 is 60. In fact, I did this one in an earlier lesson. Factors of 60 that add to negative 16 are negative 10 times uh, negative 6. So I'm going to rewrite that guy. 
replacing the negative 16x with negative 10x minus 6x. All right? And then so you can factor by grouping, and when you factor by grouping, there's your answers, two-thirds and two-fifths. All right, uno mas, one more. All right, okay, this one here. Uh, let's see, factors of 32, that are negative 32, that adds to 5. I can't think of any. That's odd. That's not 1. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula with this dude. All right, so um, when, as long as you're following all your numbers correctly, uh, I get uh, negative 5 plus or minus 3 root 17 all over 4. What a beautiful answer. That would be a nice uh, ornament at holiday time hanging on your tree inside of your house. Wouldn't that be a beauty? All right. Uh, if you're in my class, that would be your homework right there. Uh, now, uh, it says in the book, um, it says to solve using the quadratic formula, but you solve whatever method you find appropriate. Just make sure you're showing your work as always. Okay, take care.